Today, Richards has become the source of international and national controversy over the past week or two. A cause celeb. The reason? Is she male or is she female? She is a transsexual. Two years ago, she was Dr. Richard Raskin and was ranked nationally among the top 20 male tennis players over age 35. It's just overpowering all the other stories. And how many transsexuals were in the world at the time? And it just so happens one of them is a professional tennis player. It's like, what are the odds, you know? I said to her, what do you call yourself? Transgender, transsexual? I'm a woman like everyone else. Ask me how the match went instead. You know, how in the world did this happen? This might incentivize more guys to turn into girls or something. Should she be allowed to play against women opponents? It was big news. You know, it was sensational. She beat somebody who said afterwards it wasn't fair, I was playing a guy, you know. Her next opponent walked off the court, wouldn't even finish the match. Some of the lesser players were getting all up in arms and, and they almost on a strike mode. I think that what they are afraid of is the unknown. Her size, six feet one, and her skill have threatened other female players. You know, what if she comes on and becomes number one? You got, are we all gonna be able to handle that? surgeon. I grew up in Forest Hills. Both my parents were doctors. My father practiced medicine in Long Island City. My mother was a psychiatrist. She worked out of an office at home. After graduating from medical school, I became an intern at Lenox Hill Hospital. By then, I was an amateur tennis champion. Set match. How many hours sleep did you get? Six. Yeah, after how many hours hospital duty? Uh, 36. <laughs> hey, when you're tired as hell, what keeps your mind awake? Uh, come on, instant. Uh, <laughs> great match. Well, I'll go get myself a drink. So, what's going on here? You want to eat Italian tonight? Mm hmm. Uh, you do? <laughs> Fine, come on, we'll go down the village. Great. Oh, Dave Brubeck's playing at the gate. Oh, okay, we'll take him the late set. Good, it's playing at 11. <laughs> My faithful servant, Fimo Sabi. <laughs> so where is she? She. What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Well, remember last week we all went out to dinner and my watch disappeared? And uh, a couple of days later I couldn't find my gold cufflinks? <laughs> well, last night after What's Her Name went home, my wallet was missing. 
No, oh. she's missing too. She take me money and run Venezuela. Everybody now, <laughs> Matilda, Matilda, Matilda. She take me money and run Venezuela. Everybody now, Matilda, Matilda, Matilda. She take me money and run Venezuela. Up the dappy dappy. Self is the sorrow and the pain. She's <laughs> never gonna love again. Oh, Matilda, she, she take me money and run, run Venezuela. Venezuela. Now he's stuffed between the pillow and me head. Hey, Matilda. <laughs> Matilda, Matilda. I adore you. I'm so happy. Josh asked me tonight when we were going to get married. Oh, I told you. Why can't we set a date? I want to marry you very much. Very much. But I need a little more time. A year is not My parents don't like our situation, you know. My father figured out we were sleeping together and he got pretty worked up. Where there's sex before marriage, he said, there's usually no marriage. And he wondered how much longer you expected me to tag along for the ride? Is that what you feel you've been doing? Sometimes. If only you could explain what's holding you back. Why you don't like the idea of marriage? I like the idea of it. But I'm not ready for it. Oh, here we go again. You just won't level with me. Okay. I'll cool it. I'll never bring up the subject again. This time I really mean it. Don't smile. Why shouldn't I smile? Because I've hurt you. Are you going now? See you tomorrow. Love you. I love you.
Hello, Dad. There's something I want to ask Mother about. Would you tell her I'm going to drop by tomorrow afternoon at the end of the day? Yeah. All right. Good night. Good night. But women have always had to fight. <laughs> yeah, I like that one, too. Listen, don't give up that job. You'll come around. Take care, all right? Hello, Richard. How are you? Have you got a moment? I have something I have to talk to you about. Sure. Well, it's been going on for quite a while. I don't know if you've ever had a case like this. I'm sure, of course, that you're familiar with certain mental disorders that arise from gender confusion. I'm talking about certain individuals that identify completely with the opposite sex, men who have fantasies about becoming women. Well, I've never had a case like that. Read about them, of course. In fact, Last month, I believe there was an article in... Yeah. I'm talking about myself. You remember that Halloween party when you had me go out as a girl? You don't remember? Oh, right. <clears throat> well, it wasn't the first time I was dressed up in girls' clothes. It was, it was the first time I went out dressed like that. I hated it. I was humiliated. But the people at the party admired me. I felt kind of pleased. Anyway, I went on doing it in secret. Dressing up as a girl. Mm-hmm. Well, I used to sneak out of the house when it was getting dark. You were always tied up on the phone with your patients and dad was still in the hospital. And I'd dress up and walk around for an hour or two. Here? In the street? No one ever recognized you? Mm-hmm. Uh, so... I'm still dressing up as a woman. I go out. You know, with a wig, uh, makeup, everything. Dr. Bishop? Yes. Oh, that's a shame. It's not the end of the world, though. Call you back in a few minutes. Listen, I have someone with me right now. All right. Do you have anything to say? Usually you have an awful lot to say to your patients. Do you know why? I don't know. I do know that I have to do it when I feel this person, this woman, 
inside me, raging to get out. And I can't stop her. So what do you think? Maybe it's my fault. Why? Well, you know, you probably identified with me instead of your father. Quite natural, really. I was so strong. Well... Well, there, I didn't come here to ask you for a professional analysis. Well, that's exactly what you need. I'm going to make inquiries and find you the best psychiatrist available. Okay. Thanks for your time. Mm. I'm going to make some more tea. kids have fun. If the boy won't have fun going to a party dressed as a girl, will you? No! No! Then why force him to do something he doesn't want to do? What can you be thinking of? You handle children? Yes. Three of them in this house. Let's not start that again. Who started it? I forbid you to make him go! I forbid you to give me orders. Well, then stop giving everyone else orders! It's just a game. It's a game Richard doesn't want to play. Let me be the judge of that. You still want to make me cry? Listen, everyone will know you're not really a girl. You, you're just doing it for fun. It'll soon be over and, and you'll forget about it. You're a fine, handsome boy. The hat? I see. My mother and I never spoke about my problem again. Now, when you're dressed as a woman, do you give yourself a name? Rene. Rene. In French, Rene means reborn. Yeah. Well, what you're suffering from, you see, is a... a psychosis. Don't be under any illusions about it. Well, I know. Why do you think I'm paying you a dollar a minute? <laughs> but your psychosis is what I call... Compartmentalized. Would you explain that? In every other way. Your work at the hospital, your skill at tennis, your relationships with the opposite sex. You seem completely normal. I know what an effort you make to appear normal and, and how disturbed and frightened you really are, but we'll work together and uh, get you over it. Let's go back to something you said last time about your life as a child. Uh -huh. You said, very confusing. Everyone in my family, a walking contradiction. Right. Now, what about these photos? 
Is that your sister? No, that's me, dressed in my sister's clothes. That's my sister. Don't you want to play? No. Why not? Don't want to. I'm gonna make you play because I'm gonna tell you, you little thing. Please, no, boy. Mom, see what a pretty little girl. Take a look. What pretty little girl. Oh, I love you when you're pretty. Mwah. Mwah. And your necklace is on wrong. Yeah, that looks better. I'm gonna find you a nice brooch to make you look even prettier. My mother, she wanted to be a good mother, but she hadn't a real feeling for it. Mom. She put all her real feelings into her professional life. First thing in the morning, she could be loving. But by the time she got dressed, she turned in the doctor bishop, a stern professional ready to take on the whole male world, including my father. I'm going to make breakfast now, so go get dressed. On your way, Richard. David. It's 7.30. You don't want to be late for your staff meeting. Maybe. My family doesn't explain anything. I read that problems like mine are biological. Some people believe that. I read in Kraft Ebbing's book. <laughs> I found it in my mother's office. The men who want to be the women are incurably insane. That's not what you want. Only what you imagine you want. And that's the psychosis we have to fight. You have no real desire to become a woman. But you have a very strong fear of losing your manhood. And when you cross-dress, you act out that fear. What you really enjoy is not becoming a woman, but the relief of changing back to a man again. Are you still cross-dressing? Uh, yeah. I told you not to. I can't help Fight. I am fighting. Fight harder. They said that old Mother Nature was up to her own tricks. That's the story that went around. But here's the real love down. Blame on me. Renee was enjoying the show, but Dick found it very depressing and felt ashamed of himself for being there. Well, I agree with Dick. In other words, I agree with you. Now, basically, as I told her, you're a very masculine character. You're athletic, you like fast sports cars, and with Gwen, you tell me that the sex is fine. Hold on to it. I saw a cataract operation. I really want to acquire that skill. You're going to specialize in eye surgery? Well, there's a residency at the Manhattan Eye and Ear. I talked to some doctors about it. That's great. I'm sure it's right for you. What makes you so sure? The way you talk about it. <laughs> and the look in your eyes when you talk about it. belong to
Has someone else been staying here? No. Oh, it belongs to me. It belongs to you? You just keep it hidden away? Yeah. Don't tell me you wear it. Yeah. You're kidding. <laughs> you dress up in women's clothes? Here in your apartment, all by yourself? I get a room in a hotel, and I put on women's clothes, and I wear makeup, I put on a wig, and I go out. In the street? I walk around. But when you make love to me, I know you love me. So why do you want? They call it a compulsive disorder. How can I help you? Please let me help you. I understand now why you refused to marry me. But when you're with me, you feel like a man. Mm -hmm. You love me. So if we stay together, very, very close together, won't that help? Hell of a thing to ask. You didn't ask me, I offered. It's not fair. Life isn't always fair. To you either. I'll have the 1.5 forceps, please. Right. And the scissors. I need some cortisone in about three minutes, Dr. Gold. You'll we'll have the antibiotics now, Dr. Gold. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Is that you in there, Rad? Yeah, kind of. Well, come in. Okay, okay. What's going on? Yeah. I have to see you, Josh. I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, you don't. I mean, what's the joke, huh? I mean, this isn't funny, Richard. I'm sorry, man. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Chanel number five? <laughs> I've got to talk to you, Josh. Oh, well, get it off your chest. And what a lovely chest it is. You know, walking in those heels must be hell. You know something? These earrings are terrible. I love your hair. The dress is great, but the earrings... Have to go. Oh, you give me a break. What is it, Richard? Am I supposed to take this seriously? I mean, you look like a, a, a fool. Well, I feel like a fool. Tonight, I look great. You should see me on my off day. Oh, thank you. Gosh, this has been going on for years. What? You dress up? You dress up? 
Would you stop it? I mean, tell me this is a joke, will you? Please? Can't you imagine what it feels like to be walking around dressed like this? And you can't tell anybody about it. No, I'm afraid I can't. I feel like a woman. You feel like a woman? to meet my neighbors, Dale and Gloria. Dale and Gloria, this is my friend Dick, surgeon, tennis champ, and a woman. Expected woman. Expecting to be a woman. I mean, he's not quite a woman yet. There's still some problems to get ironed out. Those size 12 feet, those Burt Lancaster shoulders. Oh, do they have an operation to take those off, too? Uh, Josh, I, I think we should go. Gloria. Go? Why, why, we're just starting. Gloria, do you have any wigs? Maybe we could all put on some wigs and have a little party. I think he likes you, baby. You son of a bitch. Me? What about you? What did you come here for? Why do you have to tell me this? So you think you can humiliate me out of this? I don't think anything else would work with you. So why don't you just, just take your wig and your drape and your scarf and your pretty purse and get out of here. And every time I see you like this again, you're going to get the same kind of treatment. You're on, buddy. Oh, my God. Maybe I should start taking lessons from you, Dick. I mean, uh, you used to take lessons from me. What you talking about? the Eastern Indoor Championships again this year? If I can find the time, you always find time to win. Is Gwen feeling better? Sure, it was nothing. Hello, Gwen. Another resounding defeat. <sighs> See you guys inside for a drink. See ya. Would you like to go to a movie before dinner? Would you marry me if I was pregnant? <laughs> Would you marry me if I was pregnant? Are you? I'm sorry. That makes two of us. I don't think I can handle it. Being a mother? Cheap child. You deserve it. Don't think I like being the way I am. I don't want to. I really don't. I'm not going to have your child. Then give it up for adoption. And I won't be taken care of by an amateur with a coat hanger. Have you any other suggestions for my future? <clears throat> well, there's some good clinics in Puerto Rico. There are some certified doctors I could ask around. 
You do that, Dick. And call me. How is she today? She says she feels better, but of course any patient will say that for a while after the tumor's been moved. You talked to a doctor again? This morning. He still only gives her a 10 percent chance. Your mother had a private talk with him, too. So don't always give in. Put your best face on it for a change. All right. Take care. Hello, Richard. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm okay. Don't you want some tea? No, I'm fine. I'm a bit tired. <laughs> you work too hard. Hmm. I always have. What else is there? Richard, sit down. Have a chair. Okay. How's Gwen? Oh, she's fine. I like her very much. I hope you marry her. Since my mother died and I broke up with Gwen, Renee is stronger than ever. As long as you can still act like a man. But it's only an act. Renee is the act. Well, I don't believe that anymore. Look, only last week you met this, this girl, Nadine. You made love to her. Oh, oh. Dr. Beck, can I explain something to you? I know what's done in bed because I know what Renee would like. I can imagine myself in this situation, what she would like. You have got to get over this craziness. You have to fight it. Now, lie down. Lie down, please. You're suffering an anxiety attack brought on by your unwillingness to face the truth about yourself. What is the truth? You know it, but you resist it. I would like to prescribe a tranquilizer. You want to drug me into be believing you? Lie down. Dr. Bray, I've been listening to you. Are you... I'm trying to fight this thing. Oh. That's no use! Oh, let me go to a surgeon, please! Mutilate yourself in order to become a woman? That's total craziness. You'll destroy your whole life. If I told you anything else, I'd be doing you a terrible disservice. Now, lie down, please. Lie down. Now, what we have to do to get rid of Renee once and for all. Don't interrupt. Lie down. Just listen to me very carefully. Dr. Beck's idea was incredibly simple, but it worked incredibly well. Whenever I looked in the mirror, all thoughts of Renee disappeared. A year later, I was drafted into the Navy. The Navy can always use good doctors. I understand you're quite a tennis player, too. We'll, uh, we'll station you at St. Albans on Long Island. Fine. Welcome aboard. Oh, uh, by the way, the beard will have to go. 
Are you sure? <laughs> no whiskers, that's it. Anyway, it's just a beard. Yeah. Just, no, I can't, I'm not well, no. Okay, I, no, I'll ring you. I'm fine, I'll ring you. Right. No way I can go on pretending. You have to go on fighting. It's over. I'm... thank you. Goodbye. Lie down, please. Hello there. Hello. Is this your first time? Yeah. It was real scary for me. A little weird. Thank you. Well, my point of view on this problem is very simple. When the spirit refuses to fit the body, why not make the body fit the spirit? Something wrong? It's just the first time I've ever talked to anybody about this who made sense about it. Well, I'm glad. But don't imagine that an operation can solve all your problems. You've got your career to consider. Well, if I'm at peace with myself, I'll be a better doctor. Agreed. How about your patients? How will they react to being treated by a transsexual? What's the chance I'll have to take? This is a new area of medical science. Many of my patients are doing very well, but others find themselves in some kind of sexual limbo. Neither one thing or the other. Well, that's one more chance I'll have to take. Very well, my friend. We'll go through the usual tests if they're satisfactory. We'll start the hormone shots next week. Well, I don't know how to thank you enough. Oh, one last thing. Long before you start living completely as a woman, you'll start looking more womanly if people comment on it tell them you're taking special medication for her. you're a doctor invent what you like <laughs> You know that we only have 200 more hours to go? Only 200 more hours? Mm. And we're halfway through. You know, I finished your um, horoscope. At last. It's really very encouraging. You're going to have success. And a very important. You know, there's important a, and, man? And, and an important change. And um, oh, that would be it's, uh, it's really quite wonderful. How tall? Uh, 
Right, Wendy, would you put these glasses on for me? Right, thank you, Wendy. Now, would you tell me how many dots you can see? Two. What color are they? Red. Thank you. She can take the glasses off now. Basically, she's suppressing the vision in one eye. You think she'll have to have surgery? Possibly, but it's very minor. I saw it was very successful. Of course, if you want a second opinion. Oh, no. Everyone says you're the best there is. Even though you are a little weird looking. Wendy, shut up. That's why her dad tell you. Please, shut up. Also, sorry to hear about your illness. Oh, it's all right. I'll be much better soon. OK, thank you, Wendy. There was this cute guy across the street. Yeah. And we were, I thought he was looking at me. And I was just, he started walking across the street. And just when he gets to the point where he's going to say something to me, he talks to the person behind me. <laughs> you know, you look terrific when you laugh. You just look great. It's such a change. I, I feel good. I feel terrific. So you're feeling fine. No depression, no anxiety. Not for a long time. Oh, I feel good. I feel really adjusted. I know this will come as a shock to you, Renee, but I've decided to discontinue your treatment. Well, I believe we should let the effects of the hormones subside and see how you do as a man again. I'm concerned about your future. No transsexual has ever been a practicing physician. Oh, but I want to live my life as a woman. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Have you been pressured? So far, all of my patients have been fairly obscure people, but if a promising young physician is, is allowed to change his sex and it results in mental problems and the whole thing somehow leaks out to the press, it would be very damaging for my work. So you have been pressured? It was a very hard decision. Don't make it harder for me. Have you any idea what this treatment has already cost me? I've been discharged from the Navy. I haven't got a job. I'm ready to live my life completely as a woman. I am sorry, Richard. I don't care how you rationalize it, Dick. This is just some crazy fantasy trip. Clinic in Casablanca has accepted me. That's real enough. Your money is real enough. John Hopkins turned you down. The doctor in Chicago wouldn't even look at you. That's because they're scared, like Dr. Gernstein. Casablanca. It's not like the movie, you know, and you're not Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> Is there anything I can say to stop you? No. Just don't go make a fool of yourself in this rhinestone gown and this other fancy stuff you got. For God's sake, Dick, you know, if you're going to live as a woman, at least give yourself some time to see if it's going to work out. I'll have a week on the boat. I'll have a week down to the south of France, then to Spain. That's nothing. I'm talking about months, maybe a year, and not in the south of France or Spain. I mean, someplace normal, you know, like, like Oklahoma. If you're hoping I'll change my mind, no way, Josh. Tell me, how do I look? Do I look ridiculous? No. Your face is good, old lady, huh? Your body looks plastic enough to accept the change. Eh? And do you think I'll ever look as convincing as you do? 
<laughs> Miss Afton, no. Why not? But do you have any regrets? None. Never. Look at that sea. Isn't that something? Oh, that's really great. Beautiful, no? I have an incredibly normal love for you. A boyfriend. Did does he know? A nice apartment. My job at the beauty parlor. I am certain. Danielle. Um, before the operation, how, how did you feel? Did you feel afraid? Not at all. I felt perfectly calm. Because I knew I was ready. It is very important to have no doubts, no fears. To feel completely sure of yourself. <laughs> Buenas noches. Buenas noches. American? May I join you? Sure. You are here on a holiday? Marry? No. <laughs> Salud. Salud. Ah, a career woman, as they say in America. <laughs> but hopefully not one who lives only for the work. Mm. There, there must be some romance in your life. A lovely dress. The American queer.
doctor is expecting me. Fill out this form. Your operation is tomorrow. changed my mind. How you bug yourself? Dick, Dick, old buddy, old pal. Say hello to Mary. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's the matter, cat? Got your tongues? Talk here, converse. Thank you, go. Yeah. Salvation Army. You look kind of pale for someone who's been to Morocco. No, I've been sick for a while. Been in Paris. Love of vodka on the rocks. And you can put it on my friend's tab. Put it on her tab. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you, Dick's a great tennis player? More than once. Why? Did you play? Mm -mm. Maybe you could teach her. Josh, sometimes she's so obvious. Me? Obvious? You have no idea what a build-up he gave you. I came here expecting to be terribly disappointed. What, you're not disappointed? How lucky you are, taking a trip to Europe. Why, have you never been there? I always hope they'd send me over there on a photo session. I'm a model, you see. So far, I've only gotten to Disneyland. School. School. You and Miriam might like her a lot. What am I going to do? Make it work. You're going to make it work. After all, Miriam seems to like you a little. You just finished telling me that since you stopped taking all that, that stuff, that you're beginning to feel a little. You like her? Like what? Hmm? Oh, I like... I like tennis. Well, you know about that already. I like um, my work. Uh, you know about that, too. I like uh, Corvettes, Shelby Cobras, fast cars. Yes. I like Jaguars best. Oh. I like um, Ella Fitzgerald, Scott Fitzgerald. You tell me what you like. The sun. The Beatles. Doctors. Dreamers. James Dean movies. James Dean was a mess. You only say that because he was sensitive. You part Swedish? No, why? Something foreign about you, kind of Nordic. Russian. My father's family are Russian. <laughs> what do 
are you thinking? I'm just wondering if you're free this, uh, this weekend. Sure. You want to fly to Bermuda, get some sun? Are you serious? If you are. Da, 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 da. Stars <laughs> in your eyes. <laughs> Where's this honeymoon? Six months later. Mmm, very nice. Oh, you don't look in a good mood that day. Probably trying to figure out how we were going to pay for the new Jag we just picked up. You managed. You mm -hmm. managed. I doubled my workload and took him a lot of private patients. Mm. That's what you wanted anyway. You kept saying that was the only way to build a reputation. Paris, our first anniversary. You don't look like you're in a very good mood that day either. No, I was trying to figure out how we were going to pay for everything after we'd cleaned out Saint Laurent and Cartier. We managed. Managed. Whenever I try to economize, he won't let me. Well, you look like you're in a pretty good mood that day. Who wouldn't be? <laughs> and he's the best. So, where are you two going on your uh, vacation uh, this year? Dick's been invited to a convention in Europe. He's taking Andy and the nurse. I'm going to Bermuda. Separate vacations, my dear. How modern. If you don't want to talk to me anymore, and you don't want to make love to me anymore, what's left? Andy. That's not enough for me. Why don't you get out? So, after you and your wife were divorced, your compulsion grew stronger again, and now it's stronger than ever. Yes. In your private life, you started living as a woman. How does it feel? Feels all right. That's why I do it. Silicone? Estrogen. A few weeks ago, you went back to see Dr. Benjamin, found he's retired, spoke to his associate. And he sent me to a psychiatrist who said I should have the operation and sent me to you. Are you sure you want to do it? I'm really sure I want it. I'm a surgeon. You've been to a reputable psychiatrist who says you should have this operation. So, step into my examining room. I'll do it. Dr. Granado took three and a half hours to transform and reshape me completely into a woman. Dick slept through it all and felt nothing. But 20 minutes after the operation was over, Rene woke up. Oh my God. Come on in. Drop those 
size 12s up on the coffee table. Take a load off. Well, I've got something important to tell you, Josh. Wait, let me guess. While on vacation, met Mr. Wright. No, I haven't been on vacation. I've been in a hospital. Female trouble? No. I've had the surgery. I'm a woman now. You're putting me off. No, I'm serious. Well, how do you feel? Well, I went through a lot of pain, but I feel fine now. No regrets? This is always what I've always wanted. It's too late for regrets. Can't go home again. I guess not. Well, Dick, um... Renee. Pardon? Renee. You call me Renee, okay? Well, Renee, um, I guess I'll have to start fixing you up with men now. Oh, oh, oh Josh, if we're going to stay friends, you're going to have to be easy on me, even if it isn't easy on you. Okay, you got it. You know me, I always liked uh, women. Better than men, anyway. All right, Chin Chin. You set a lovely table, Renee. <laughs> Keep that line tight. Just bring it, ease it over, ease it over. Dad, do you really have to go and live in California? Yeah, I'm afraid I do. When I get settled down, I'll ask your mother to send you out and visit. Would you like that? Sure. I would like that. I'd like it, too. There's great fishing out there. Mm -hmm. Great beaches, too. What kind of fish shall I catch in California? Bigger than here? Oh, yeah, way bigger. Tuna, yellowtail, sea bass. I think I could handle a few of them. Sure. Well, some of them, anyway. There's plenty you can handle. What's your line? What's your line? That's right. Keep it. But California's really far away. Yeah, it is far away. But we'll still feel close to each other. Just like now? You know I love you very much. That's one thing that will never change. That's good. Drapery, by the way. And by the way, Farrah Fawcett and Lee Mage is saving this complex. Oh, uh huh. Really? <laughs> Dining oh room straight God. ahead. Kitchen on the right. Lovely white towel. Your That's doctor, beautiful. you said. Married? No divorce. Me too, twice. Is that so? We want to go to the clubhouse together one night. Oh, it's yes. very social. <laughs> <laughs> Bedroom this way. Your credentials are fine. Likewise, your uh, letter of recommendation. Do you play golf? Oh, no. <laughs> Tennis is my game. Golf is mine. I want to spend a lot more time playing it. That's why I'm looking for a new associate to uh, split the workload. You were doing very well in New York. Why did you leave? Tired of the hassle. <laughs> And the winters. Yeah. I wasn't planning to share my practice with a woman doctor. Why not? I never worked with one before. Some of us are not bad at all, you know. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. I have nothing against women. 
Could you start on Monday? 7.30? Sure. Welcome. I'll see you Monday, then. Lived here long? No, I just came out a couple of weeks back. Came in from New York. Oh, never been there. Never wanted to. Chicago's enough cold for me. You like California? Oh, what you think? Oh, I think it's great. But then I like the outdoors. Volleyball, swimming, tennis. You play tennis? Oh, well, no. I used to. But, um... I don't play much now. I'm too busy. Why are you so busy? That's my profession. I'm a doctor. No kidding. Wow, that's great. Uh, listen, maybe we could go over to the John Wayne Tennis Club sometime and get you back into practice. Oh, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to. That'd be great. She was out of practice. I didn't say that. You did. I'm realizing how much I've really missed this game. Where did you get that forehand drive? I have never seen a woman with a drive like that. Gonna need a lot of practice so I can catch up with you. Uh, <clears throat> hi. Hi. I'm sorry to interrupt. Excuse me. Briggsley is the name? Yes. Hello. Hi. Jeff Briggsley. Renee Richards. Renee, nice to see you. Uh, I was watching you play, and I said to myself, she looks like a tournament player to me. You know why? Do you know why? <laughs> because you've got that killer instinct. Am I right? You know what I'm talking about, right? I've never played in tournaments. That's what I'm saying. You should. Now, there's a little tournament starting up in La Jolla that would be perfect. It's small, it's quiet, it's intimate, it's relaxed. Oh, I couldn't. You sure? I'm too busy. Think Thanks. about it, okay? Right. Think about it, that's all. If you change your mind, if, give me a call. All right. Okay? okay? I'm a promoter. All right. Never know it. Uh, <laughs> St. Bernard with refreshments. There you go. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. <sighs> that guy before, um, you no, know, Grigsley. Yeah. Take him up on the offer. Play in the tournament. You're a hell of a tennis player. You'll probably win. Just do it. Do it. No, I'm too busy. Were oh, you really that busy at the hospital? We all. Any time for your personal life? That's been on hold for a while. I think a while is long enough. It's not. Nothing. Nothing at all. You sure?
Dr. Richards. Who? Mr. Grigsley. Oh, Mr. Grigsley. How are you? Well, I don't know. I... Uh-huh. All right. Well, if you're sure it's only a local amateur event, because if it's a big deal, I definitely... All right. Okay. Okay, you've got your replacement. All right. Bye. Have you ever been ambitious? No, not really. Ambition leaves very little time for anything else. What about you? Yes, I've always had a big ambition. Yes, what? To be much smaller. Why? I'm too tall, look. Not at I'm all. I'm as tall as you. It's horrible. So what? It's not horrible. Yeah, I'd like to be down here. No, you're fine the way you are. You think so? I think so. You really think so? I really so? think so. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> That's nice. Have you ever been married? Are you proposing? No. Good. Once is enough. Why, you have been married? Mm -hmm. In Australia. It was a disaster. Oh, you take life so easily. Does that bother you? No, I envy it. You envy it? Why? Mm. Because. You don't talk much about yourself. No, there's nothing much to tell. Well, nothing much you want to tell. Okay, your turn. Make sure you telephone me when you get back. You bet. I just think it's such a damn shame I'll still be at that sales convention the day you're playing the tournament. I know you're going to win, but I wanted to be there to see you win. <laughs> Surprised by the turnout myself? Have fun! Have fun! Break a leg! Can we get some shots from in here? I'll go right ahead. Eh? Sure. I should get some tight coverage on. How you doing, kid? Yeah. Well, Discovery seemed a little nervous at first, but she's really hit her stride. I'm impressed. Yeah. You and everybody else. Richards. Good morning. Trish Collins, Channel 8, San Diego. What does the name Richard Radley mean to you? What? Isn't it true your medical diplomas were originally made out in the name Richard Radley, then changed to Renee Richards? Um, no. You never practiced in the East or played amateur tennis as Richard Radley? Uh... You'd make a very good detective. It's part of a good reporter's job. I'm running the story on the 11 o'clock news tonight. Well, well, you shouldn't do that. But you, you do ruin my life. I don't think so. Well, what about my little son? 
Miss Collins, you know, this is a very personal matter. I'm a, I'm a very private person. It's a very personal thing, you know. When you stepped onto that court in La Jolla, you became a public figure. And the public has a right to know about you. Why? They'd never seen a female player with such a powerful forehand volley. But does it explain why Richard Radley entered the tournament? Was his career as a male tennis player going downhill? Was this the only way he could hope to win? Maybe. But it doesn't explain why ophthalmologist Dr. Richard Radley is now practicing in Newport Beach as Dr. Renee Richards. There seems to be more in this whole strange story than meets the eye. Hey, 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 who are you? Are you a man or a or Are you a man or yourself? Have you actually had the opportunity? Hey, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. You coming up to the apartment? Good luck. Take care of yourself. Get a picture of you. 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 Come in, Dick. Oh. oh, those reporters keep ringing the bell and calling up, wondering where you are. I'll be staying a few days. Oh, fine. Your room is always ready. I uh, suppose you're planning to lie low for a while and uh, wait until everything dies down. Well, not exactly. <laughs> I've been asked to play in a new tournament next week in New Jersey. So if I hear you right, the U.S. Open Committee won't let you play future tournaments unless you take the chromosome test. Oh. And what the... What have chromosomes got to do with what kind of person I am today? The test's been available for 10 years. The committee's never invoked it before. So you think it's discrimination? It has to be. Am I legally a woman? Yes, that's a matter of public record. Well, then I want to put the record straight. Well, then you only have one option now. Petition the court. Challenge the right of the open committee to apply the chromosome test in your case. Excuse me, someone on the phone for you. Who is it? Miriam. Hello, Miriam. I see. Okay, well, I'd like to say goodbye to him. All right? Oh. Andy! Ah, how are you? It's your dad, you creep. <laughs> okay, well, you come back soon and see me. That's right. I love you. I love you! All right? Miriam's taking him to Europe for a while because of the publicity. Guess she's doing the right thing. I'm uh, worried about you. I'll be okay. Yeah, but you were never too good at hitting those low balls. You, you gotta watch that. I know. I'll try it for you. Oh, it's all right. Okay. Okay. Knock him dead. Dick, hold it. You 
I've got your purse. <laughs> Come on, she has more strength than any woman her size. Renee's on hormones which reduce her muscle size. Isn't this making a farce of women's sports, letting transsexuals in? Oh my God, now you're telling me we're going to have mobs of men changing their sex just so they can play in women's tournament tennis. Renee, tell us about your young son. What does he think about all this? Please leave your son. The woman at the match can play with you. Please just leave her alone. The male competitive. and the affidavits my lawyers presented here today. I would like to point out that I cannot be simply categorized as a transsexual. I am a physician, I'm a surgeon, I'm a parent, I'm a tournament tennis player, and legally I'm a woman. And whatever the world may think of the choice I made, I believe I had no other choice. All I ask in presenting this petition here today is that I be accepted as the person I am today and that I be allowed to live the life I was compelled to live after a long and painful struggle. All rise. This court finds in favor of Dr. Renee Richards. Court dismissed. So, did you talk with your mom? Is everything clear? Seemed pretty clear to me. You had to get a divorce because two women can't stay married. That's right. Maybe there's more fish over there. I think we should try over there. It looks pretty good. Well, maybe since he's fishing, he knows there's fish there, so we'll go there too. Will you wind in a bit now? Yeah. Can you have babies now? No. I guess it's just me. You're famous. I guess that's enough. What makes you think I'm famous? I saw you on TV, winning at tennis. Do you hear them criticizing me on TV and radio? If they did, I'd turn it off. Why should anyone criticize you? Well, some people don't like what I've done. Why don't they? Well, you know what happens when a fish gets hooked on the line? Sure, it struggles, tries to escape. Yeah, well, sometimes people get caught on hooks. What kind of hooks? Problems, situations they don't like. So they struggle to get out of them? Yeah, and sometimes other people don't understand. Why don't they understand? Well, it's hard for a free fish to understand what a hooked fish feels like, isn't it? Okay, come on, let's go.
Sexual identity is a big head choice, not a little head choice. Don't think with your dick. This is an idea whose time has come, more powerful than all the armies of the world. Don't think with your dick. Watch I am this. My chick with a dick. Hurry back here, baby. Hello. Hi. Hi. Let's play the stranger. Okay. When someone gets home tonight, someone should be wearing a naughty French maid's outfit, a blonde wig, and holding a six-pack of Bud Light. Me like you, the stranger. Oh. You meant for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Whoa, 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 stranger! Make it a Bud Light. Sexual identity is a big head choice, not a little head choice. Don't think with your dick. Watch I am Flix. Time for a wake up call message from I am Flix. <laughs> As you think in your mind, that's who you are. Oh, oh my nuts. Expand oh. your mind about what the drug companies and what big businesses are doing to you. Learn about the evil to rich at IM Fix. <laughs> Sexual identity is a big head choice, not a little head choice. Don't think with your dick. This is an idea whose time has come, an idea more powerful than all the armies of the world. Isn't how other people see you. 